Hello and welcome to part 8 of the Razor Reviews Batathon Returns. We are two months into this thing and finally we have an actual film review. Continue on with Arkham Month, I'm going to be talking all about Batman Assault on Arkham. Uh, now before we get into this, um, the kind of reception for this whole series so far has been a lot kind of uh, slower than I thought it would be. Uh, that kind of happened with the first Batathon. It kind of had loads of interest in the beginning when I was reviewing Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, then just kind of tapered down a bit. But then, you know, over the past couple of years, people have gone back and watched those videos. So I guess I need to think about that. Uh, and when I post a video in this series and it gets like 50 views, um, you know, it's, it gets a bit disheartening. But nonetheless, I'm going to carry on, uh, obviously, and um, I'll hope that more people will find the videos in time and hopefully enjoy them. Uh, I know the Arkham Origins video was a bit of a full-on one, an hour long, but, you know, I had a lot to say about it and I don't want to limit myself. This one will be a lot shorter, not too much to say. And I really want to review this Blu-ray in full, but I just haven't got the time. I've got loads of other stuff going on. You know, daily videos. I've got future projects going and uh, you know coming in the pipeline. Then I've got like a uh, a ten day trip back home that's coming up next week. So I'm rushing to kind of get things done. But I don't want to half ass them either. But this one I really would have liked to have reviewed the whole Blu-ray. But I think I'll save this for maybe a Blu-ray review episode. But nonetheless, I watched the film today, uh, Batman: Assault on Arkham, and it is part of the Batman Arkham video game series continuity thing mission quest thing. It, uh, it's one of those kind of tie-ins that um, I, I don't think really is necessary in terms of like if you play the Batman Arkham games you're not really missing out if you don't watch this you know but it is a nice companion piece. Um, it's not vital to the overall story and one thing I'll say about this uh, is that you can kind of just you know just just get Batman off the cover you know take Batman off the... I mean this is not a Batman movie this is a Suicide Squad movie. As you can see the cover there, you got um, you got Deadshot, you got Harley Quinn. Who else is on the cover? Uh, we got uh, Captain Boomerang, King Shark, um, is it Black Spider. I'm pretty sure. So really, this is the this is a Suicide Squad movie, you know. And I actually heard about this uh, on one of Kevin Smith's podcasts. He's like, it's like that Suicide Squad movie. And I'm like, when did that come out? And then he was talking about this. Uh, but either way, this is the Steelbook, the French, I believe, Steelbook. Might be the French or the German Steelbook. Come on, I got it from somewhere. Uh, France or Germany. I'm pretty sure it's French. Yeah, it's yeah, it's French. Um, it's a three disc set. It has a uh, Blu-ray and it has uh, two DVDs. So the DVDs, I guess, have the uh, the movie and uh, the, the special features on the other disc. Behind the, uh, the, the disc, you can see the Arkham Asylum sign. Nice inside artwork. A printed back, unfortunately. And I guess this isn't even technically a steelbook. It's a metal pack because it opens all the way and the spine is one of those hinge spines, which I hate. But it does have the title on it, at least. Uh, but yeah, I like the front artwork, you know, it's not a great steelbook, but it was, I think it was cheaper than the standard release, so I just thought I'll add it to my Batman steelbook collection, why not? I've got quite a lot of them and I love to add to that collection when I can. So, uh, yeah, the story basically uh, is set a couple of years after Arkham Origins, so they actually take, take that game into account. Uh, so it's set before Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, and it follows the Suicide Squad being brought together by Amanda Waller and being sent into Arkham Asylum to retrieve information that the Riddler has stolen uh, and so it's vital that they get this information back from Amanda Waller and she basically puts a bomb in the back of everyone's neck in the Suicide Squad. So we have uh, Floyd Lawton, we have Deadshot who's kind of the main character of the film uh, we have, um, oh what's her name now, see some of these characters are completely new to me, Killer Frost uh, a girl who can kind of has these kind of uh, ice abilities I guess almost like, well, I can't think of anything else really but you know, she can touch things and they freeze, things like that. And I guess her body is uh, can, can withstand cold temperatures, much like Mr. Freeze in a way. And in fact, there's a Mr. Freeze kind of reference with her character um, later on in the film. Uh, then we have Harley Quinn. She comes into it. Um, and I was thinking, like, well, how does that work? But I'm pretty sure in Arkham Origins you see kind of the, the beginning of her meeting the Joker. And in Arkham Asylum, she's become Harley Quinn, but you can find the tapes of her conversations with the Jokers as she becomes Harley Quinn, but that could be set before this, I guess. They could be old tapes. Anyway, uh, Harley Quinn, there's Captain Boomerang, uh, Australian, there's uh, Black Spider, I believe, King Shark, who's kind of like a King, uh, Killer Croc kind of character. I'd never seen him before. Uh, there's someone else as well I'm missing, I'm sure. Maybe not. Although, yeah, there's a couple of other characters and they kind of bite the dust pretty soon. <laughs> so they got a bomb in the back of their neck so that uh, they have to obey what Amanda Waller is saying. They have to go on the mission, otherwise she'll blow their heads off, basically. And this big Russian guy, I think KG Beast, maybe? Uh, he's like, oh, you're bluffing, you won't, you know, spoilers. I mean, it's a very mild spoiler, but he's like, you, you won't kill us. You know, you're not gonna, 
you know, you wouldn't come to us, you, you obviously need our help, so you're not going to kill us, you know, if we don't obey you. And she's like, be my guest. So he walks out the door, and she blows his head off. Boom! And that is where, another thing I really need to talk about this film. This film, I don't know what the rating is for France. Uh, it doesn't say rating anywhere on here, which is unusual. They usually have it stickered right on the front, um, like permanently. But uh, this I would definitely call a 15 in the UK, uh, and probably a PG-13 in America. I can tell they were pushing the R rating with this one. I mean, there's a lot of suggestive dialogue, especially when it comes to sexuality uh, and Harley Quinn in particular. There's a couple of lines I couldn't believe they snuck into this film. Like, literally, like, wow. Okay. Uh, and then there's even a sex scene between Harley Quinn and Deadshot. You know, she jumps on him. She's, you know, she, you can basically see everything apart from her nipples in, in a way. And he's just like, oh, okay. Then he gets on top of her and it's just like, wow, where did this come from? And then... Her and Killer Frost are like getting their tits out almost every, any any opportunity. Again, just anything bar the nipple, you know, you're pretty much seeing and it's just like, I was really surprised by that, you know. Uh, even when they're turned around, you know, like the, 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 the crack of their ass is always sticking out the bottom of their tracks. It's a really sexually suggestive movie. I don't know where that came from. I don't know whether, whether they're just like, right, we've been given the go-ahead to go PG-13, let's push it as far as possible. I don't know whether the guys who were designing the girls were, were kind of getting their kicks off, of, you know, animating this way. I don't know. Uh, it didn't bother me, but I just thought a little bit it was a bit too much in a way. Just like, yeah, we get it now. You don't need to go overboard with this. It's not really serving the story that well. Um, and then again, uh, language. There's you know a couple of swearing in there. There's one almost the f bombs almost dropped at the very end of the film, which is a really funny moment. Actually, quite a funny ending. The opening credits I didn't like. They it kind of sets up all the characters and it just it felt disjointed and then you have the title and it just it didn't flow very well for me but the actual main bulk of the story where the Suicide Squad is together they've got to infiltrate Arkham Asylum they have to retrieve this uh, basically a memory stick from the Riddler's Kane you know I loved all that it was like a heist movie and that was what I really enjoyed about this so the, the beginning of the film not so much but the the actual bulk of it I really really enjoyed and their characters started to kind of bounce off each other in a nice way like Captain Boomerang very sarcastic and you know everyone's kind of like got their own little things within the group and yeah I really really enjoyed it a lot um, and what I enjoyed especially was how it ties in with the video games uh, in a very subtle way if you played Arkham Asylum the original game you'll notice a lot of the locations are very similar which was really really cool to see like the um, I don't even know what the area was but it's in, I think it's in the prison or in the, the, the yeah the prison part of uh, Arkham Asylum the island uh, and that you, you see Joker for the first time in the film and the room is exactly the same as the one in Arkham, which is really cool. Uh, now, the voice cast, uh, Kevin Conroy plays Batman. Again, I'll get to Batman in a second. Uh, Neil McDonough plays um, uh, Floyd Lawton, Deadshot. Uh, I think he's a really good actor. He was in the uh, Captain America, the first Captain America movie, wasn't he? Maybe the second one as well, I'm not too sure. Anyway, um, I've seen him in loads of stuff. He was in Desperate Housewives, and he's probably been in tons more stuff, I, I don't know. But he did a good job as Deadshot. At times, I didn't buy him. There was a few lines that I thought just didn't work, didn't work. There was the writing or the performance. Uh, the one who played Harley Quinn was not uh, the same uh, actress who played her in the animated series or even the Arkham games, um, but she did a good enough job, I guess. Um, Troy Baker came back to do the Joker, the guy who did the uh, the Mark Hamill impression in Arkham Origins. And again, you know, his impression of Mark Hamill's Joker was fine. Uh, it fit the film. But I was kind of glad that Mark Hamill didn't do this film, to be honest, um, because as much as I enjoyed it, it wasn't great, you know, it was just enjoyable, you know, and so, sometimes films just need to be that, they don't need to be like the best thing ever. Uh, I, I think Troy Baker did a fine job, but Kevin Conroy, brilliant as Batman as always, but the thing with Batman is, he just, um, there's a great Batman moment in it that I really like, this, this reveal halfway through, it was like, oh shit, you know. But apart from that, you know, he just kind of pops, and he's probably in the film for like 10 minutes max, maybe 15. And this is like an hour and 15 minutes long. Not, again, these animated movies are usually around an hour, 15, 20 minutes. Not very long at all. But yeah, he's not in it as much as you'd expect. Um, it's really Deadshot's movie and his arc and his story and him leading Suicide Squad through this mission in Arkham Asylum. And I really enjoyed it. There's some great action scenes and bits where I thought, wow, it's almost like the moves you can do in the game and in one of the documentaries on this they actually say that they, they were trying to emulate some of the stuff that you do in the game just very slight you know homages and stuff there's tons of references in this there's loads of Batman Returns there's a great scene with the Penguin uh, and again Nolan North who portrays Penguin in Arkham City Arkham Knight uh, came back to portray this version of the with Penguin which I really love kind of the 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 East End London kind of uh, accent to Penguin which I really the hard nosed kind of I really love that version that vision of, of Penguin I've said that so many times, but I love that he had a small role in this. Um, you see other Arkham, uh, you know, the video game kind of versions of characters like Bane and uh, Poison Ivy. 
Um, and they don't have like speaking roles, but they kind of appear and they look exactly like they did in the, in the first Arkham Asylum game, which is really cool. Just loads of little visual references. Um, there's a scene where Harley Quinn goes into this toy store and it has like a big kind of girl's face with pigtails that looks quite like her. And she puts her hands up against the wall and it's exactly like the shot from Batman Returns where Michelle Pfeiffer does the thing on the, the window with the cat on it. So loads of little fun references to different movies. I think the, uh, the Joker's mask from The Dark Knight is in there, the 2008 Christopher Nolan film. Because uh, they go through this big kind of warehouse in Arkham Asylum with all the villains kind of uh, uh, stuff that they've used over the years and stuff. And so you find little, little Easter eggs and things like that. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed the heist. I enjoyed the, the story going forward and uh, having Amanda Waller being kind of the big bad guy and stuff. But yeah, Batman was almost an afterthought really in the film. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's a bit different in a way. So it was kind of cool, you know. Overall, I enjoyed it. I'd give it maybe a 7 out of 10. Definitely worth checking out if you're an Arkham uh, fan in terms of the video games, the Arkham video game series, and even if you're a Batman fan in general, it's a, it's a decent film, it's worth watching, I wouldn't rush out to buy it, but I'm glad I own it at least. And as for the Blu-ray itself, um, I watched uh, a bit of the main documentary, but I just haven't got the time really to go through the rest of it. I will at some point and do a Blu-ray review of this, but until then, uh, that's it really. And I'll tell you what's on the Blu-ray. i got a list up here from Blu-ray.com because um, I can't really decipher the back of the French um, Blu-ray here. But there's an audio commentary with uh, DC Comics Animation Creative Director Mike Carlin, the writer of the movie Heath Corson, uh, executive producer James Tucker, and they talk about everything obviously and you know, go into the film's production. Um, but the director Jay uh, Oliver is uh, not on the audio commentary for some reason. Uh, then there's a 14 minute documentary, The Joker's Queen, Harley Quinn, I guess it looks at um, you know the, the origins of the character and through comics and you know uh, I guess the film as well, I didn't, I didn't check it out at all. There is a sneak peek of Justice League, Throne of Atlantis. Uh, there's four from the DC Comics Vault um, Batman episodes. And they, they do this on all these Blu-rays of the, uh, the DC animated original movies. They put on like four kind of episodes of all sorts of different animated series. So for this one you have uh, Task Force X from Justice League Unlimited. Uh, Infiltrator from Young Justice, Emperor Joker from The Brave and the Bold, and Two of a Kind from The Batman. Uh, so nothing from Batman the Animated Series, and they're all in standard definition. Which is a shame, I wish they would just, they would just kind of mask them in HD for these releases, but maybe there's like a big, I don't know, maybe they're going to come up with HD season sets of those things. I don't know, wait, they have it in there. They've done it for Justice League. The Justice League Animated Series from the 90s, I think. Anyway, uh, I don't know if they're in HD, maybe they're SD. Uh, up, you know, upscales. I'm not too sure. Anyway, and then the big one is Arkham Analyzed the Secrets Behind the Asylum, a half hour documentary. Uh, I watched about half of it, but I just haven't got the time, you know. Um, and making this video is taking up valuable time that I need right now. But uh, from what I saw, it was really good. They delve into everything in terms of Arkham, in terms of when Arkham Asylum was first mentioned, when it was Arkham Hospital, who made it the asylum why it was made into an asylum, why it was the Arkham history, how that came about, um, and then you see these great splash pages from the comics and stuff, and the, the kind of the psychology and the mentality of being in an asylum, how that was brought forward through the comics and into the um, the animated films and the um, the games as well. And they, again, they talk about, they mentioned in the documentary, I skipped through bits of it, that they, again, tried to emulate parts of the video game so it would be familiar to the fans of the video game so that it would be like a nice kind of flowing continuity between them all. Um, so that was, uh, yeah, very cool, but I didn't check out all of it, and I will at some point. That is it. That is my review of Batman Assault on Arkham. Again, 7 out of 10. If you're a big fan of Batman, definitely worth checking out. Um, if you're a more casual fan, you know, maybe just, uh, you know, if you see it cheap, maybe. But uh, otherwise, yeah. I enjoyed it, but uh, nothing too special. Thank you for watching. Uh, next week was supposed to be the culmination of Arkham Month. Four videos um, over four weeks about Batman, you know, the Arkham series. But Arkham Knight, I'm still deep into it, but I'm kind of really slowly savoring it and enjoying it, so I won't be finished by next week. So I'm going to delay my Batman Arkham Knight review, and then there'll probably be another one like about Batman Arkham Knight in terms of spoilers, because there's so much that can be spoiled with the game, unfortunately. Um, and I want to have two distinct videos on it. Uh, maybe I can post two two in one day, like the, the normal review and then the spoiler review, you know, and have two parts on one day, maybe, I don't know, like a double bonus Bathon uh, edition, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that. But next week, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, and especially as I'm going away, I need to pre-film like two episodes, so uh, I'll figure it out. And again, given the kind of lackluster response to this series, I don't think anyone's really even paying attention that this is Arkham Month or that, you know, the Arkham Knight review is coming, so I don't think anyone will mind. Uh, and again, as I said last week, if you want to check out what I'm doing on Batman Arkham Knight, I have like probably about seven, eight, nine, if not ten hours worth of my 
my playthrough, my first playthrough so far up on my YouTube channel, The Dipwits. Um, just uh, yeah, just search The Dipwits, and you can also follow me on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv forward slash RazorWireRyan. I go online and stream a bit of Batman, like an hour or so, pretty much every night. So you can watch live if you want, comment along, have a chat with me, it's all good. Uh, and then otherwise you can catch the repeats on YouTube, which will be on the Dipwits channel. Uh, so if you really want to know what I'm thinking about Arkham Knight, you can check out those videos uh, for now. Anyway, uh, I might do some more comics for next week, something like that. Um, but hey, if you have any suggestions about stuff I can do in the series, let me know. I have it all planned out until Dawn of Justice next year, but I'm willing to squeeze things in or move things around if people have something they'd really like me to kind of talk about. Um, and again, worth checking my original Batathon because I covered a lot of movies and stuff in that. I don't want to go back and retread the same things unless I have something, you know, a lot more to add to it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. 60 minutes long. This is this is my version of a short video of the Batathon. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week for whatever that review will be, and it'll be same bat time, same bat channel.